I was never interested in caregiving. I was interested in raising my children. My son was 12, my daughter was 15. I worked, my husband worked. It was pretty ordinary life, and I thought we were doing everything we needed to do. One weekend, May long weekend in 1999, my daughter went on a camping trip with her friends. They were just down a few miles away from her friend's farm, and her friend's mom phoned me and said there had been an accident. The girls had been bringing a picnic table back from the pasture, lost control on the loose gravel on the country road, and the truck had flipped end for end. Andrea had gone out the window. She wasn't wearing her seatbelt. They were taking her by ground ambulance to the hospital. I said I would meet them there, and I hung up the phone, looked at my hands, and my hands were going like this, and I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't drive. This was the beginning of my caregiving panic stage. In the hospital, they immediately did x-rays. Her spinal column had been broken in her neck, so our daughter was quadriplegic, and they call that a catastrophic injury, and it's an appropriate name. It was catastrophic in many, many ways. It took a few days to realize it, but at that stage, we had stepped out of our life and into something brand new. Things that I had thought were so important, none of that mattered anymore. All the focus became the hospital and this new learning curve and trying to understand. It was like being on a new planet and that was the only thing that mattered. So I needed to always make sure her needs were met first. I was getting more and more exhausted. I came to a point where I felt that the only option I had to get somebody in to properly take care of her was to kill myself. I went to the hospital and I told them my situation and they admitted me right away. I woke up one morning and I made a list, sitting at a little desk there in the psych ward, I made a list of all the people that were involved in her care. There were 24 names there and I realized in addition to caring for my daughter, I was running a small business because I was coordinating all of these people. And so over the next couple of weeks, we put in a plan. I started consciously thinking about all the things that I was doing that I could delegate to somebody else. That's how things, how all the needs started getting met without me having to do all of it. That was a huge piece. And then my daughter got her mom back which was important. A friend told me once, she said, you can hire people to do the chores, but you can't hire another mom. So you have to take care of mom first. And then I realized what she was talking about. One of the biggest challenges I found with having a teenager that was newly disabled was I wanted to be mom, but she also needed her independence so that she could go out and learn and grow and separate from her dad and I and uh, make mistakes. And times like that, I put my caregiver hat on, I took my mom hat off, trying to be a parent, trying to be a caregiver, and figuring out the difference as well when you've got a, a young person. That was a real challenge. It takes time, but it does stabilize, and you do figure out a new normal. A point came when I did find out about the Alberta Caregivers Association. The affirmation of, yes, caregiving is hard, Yes, there are victories in it. Yes, there are challenges in it. And yes, you just have to kind of get through it was um, a large part of the support that I had from then. And I started writing about the journey with Drea and uh, what we had been through. And that in itself helped me process again what we'd done and how far we'd come, which was a really important piece to, to acknowledge that we really had moved forward and, and come out the other end.